Hi everyone and welcome to a brand new series in my UE4 tutorials. This series is all about AI and creating AI to do all sorts of manner of things. So in this first episode we're going to set up AI and explain how it works and hopefully get something moving around uh, on its own. So we're going to build up on our AI over the, each week as we release these videos um, hopefully get into something quite advanced by the end of it. So to begin with, we're going to create a simple NPC that will be wandering around this whole entire map. So this is going to be a little demo talking about how we use behavior trees, the blackboard, AI controllers, and also nav meshes to create this effect. So in my content browser, I'm going to make a new folder and I'm going to call it AI. And I'm going to make another folder in there, NPC. So this will be my friendly NPC, and this guy is going to have a new blueprint class, and it's going to be a character, because I want him to walk around, so character, so go NPC, and we're going to open this up. So we want to be able to see what I'm doing here, so we're going to click on the mesh component on the left hand side, and choose a skeletal component, uh, skeletal mesh from the list, I'm using a third person template, therefore I only have the mannequin. And I'm going to choose the animation class of the third person and in BP. Click compile and we're done here. Close this. So we need several things here. We first of all need a AI controller. So click on add new blueprint class and you'll see player controller in the list here, but not AI controller. What a controller is, is basically like the soul and brains of possessible actors and pawns okay so if a character wants to be moved it needs a controller to tell it to move now the player controller is one that is being controlled by a human player an ai controller is when you leave the computer to move the actor or pawn around so it's not in this list here but if you click on this little expansion down the bottom here you can type in ai controller and see it there so click on it and choose select and you will name this npc underscore ai so AI controller is one component, okay? That's just going to be the thing that controls the movement of this NPC. But in order for us to make it a bit more clever and a bit more um, intelligent, we're going to use a behavior tree. So I'm not going to explain it just yet. We'll get to that when we have a look at it. So what I'm going to do is click on add new. And you'll see artificial intelligence. And you'll see behavior tree. Choose that and go NPC and I'll go BT, behavior tree. And we're also going to need the other option which was in there, and that's a blackboard. NPC, blackboard, BB. So you should have these four things. You have the mesh, the AI controller, the behavior tree, and the blackboard, which work in tandem to make uh, decisions be made. So let's link all these things up. So the NPC needs to be told to use the AI controller. So click on the NPC self uh, top component on the left hand side, click on that. And on the right hand side you'll see AI controller class and you can choose that from the drop down to use the NPC AI, the one you just made. Click compile and close that guy down. Then on the NPC AI we're going to go to its event graph and on begin play we are going to have a uh, run behavior tree node and in here we need to choose from the drop down our behavior tree and then we're going to click compile and that's it that's that then so the ai controller could tie to the npc mesh and behavior tree is tied to the ai controller open up the behavior tree and you should automatically have the blackboard asset assigned to it so it says npc bb uh, if you have multiple you just choose which one you're using from the list so this is the behavior tree. The way the behavior tree works is very different from anything else you've seen. So far if you've been watching my videos anyway. So you, you see here we've got a root here. And a details panel on the right hand side and some blackboard information down here. The blackboard is empty so therefore the bottom here is empty too. And behavior tree just has the root node available to us. So you can't get rid of the root node. It must have a root. Okay. You can't get rid of it. The blackboard we can access by clicking on the blackboard on the top right. So click on there. 
And you can see it's all empty, nothing here at all. Go back to behavior tree. So a behavior tree, the way it works is it's a decision making tree. So if we come off the bottom here, we get this arrow come out and we can drag that off and choose a selector or a sequence. I'm going to choose a sequence and from there I'm going to choose a, sorry not a sequence, let's get rid of that, let's put a selector in first. Okay, selector and I'm putting another selector in just to demonstrate how these work. Oh, sorry. Oh, all going wrong. Selector, sorry. Form a selector, then a sequence. There we go. And then another sequence coming off that. There we go. Because the root can only have one output coming out. A selector can have multiple because it'll only choose one or the other. Okay, so it won't do both at the same time. It'll only do one or the other. Root can only do one thing, and that's run then down the line. A sequence will play whatever's attached to it sequentially so it'll keep going down the down the branches until it fails when it fails it goes back up okay and you can see these little numbers here zero one and two uh, these refer to the ordering and priority so zero is top priority so it goes to there first always then it always goes down to the left hand side so one and then it goes to two so if I want to rearrange these I want this one to happen in the second place all I do is move this to the left hand side and you can see the one is now still here okay so it's switched so it's important to note trees always go down the left hand side first and foremost so on our sequence we're going to come out of here and we're going to do tasks so the tasks we're going to do are going to vary between built-in ones and our own custom ones but before we can do any of that let's uh, save what we've got here make sure you go in and save the blackboard too and close this down because our NPC is not in the world and we also need a nav mesh for it to guide itself around. So drag your NPC into the world, like so. And then now we want a nav mesh. So the nav mesh, you can search for in the modes, the place mode here. Nav, and you'll see nav mesh bounds volume. Drag this into the world and you get a volume cube appear. And you want this cube to encompass the whole level that you want the NPC to walk around. So just scale it out and up. And if you hit the P key on your keyboard, the green areas will show what is the nav mesh that the AI can use. Okay, so you just want to make sure green is everywhere. Okay. Now there are settings to change on the nav mesh that you can do to make it more less accurate to the walls here so it doesn't get these big gaps. Uh, but we're not going to do this in this episode. We'll do it down the line in a future episode. So now we've got the NPC and the nav mesh into the world, we're going to go back to our NPC behavior tree. So I'm going to get rid of this second sequence for now. We'll come back to that later and in a future episode. So this first sequence here, we're just going to make the NPC wander about. So here we need a new task. The first task we're going to set itself is to find a location to move to. So if you drag off of here, you'll see tasks is open for you. Now the game engine comes with some already, but you'll see there's none here, none here to say where to move to. You've got ones that say move to, but nowhere to say to actually where to move the actual character to. So we're going to make our own custom task for this. So up the top you'll see new task. Click on this and you'll get a new template. Now this looks very similar because you've got a blueprint in the middle. And you've got some details on the right hand side and on the left hand side you've got your variables, macros, functions and so on and so forth. So here a task is the instruction you want to give to the AI. So this task is going to handle one thing only and that is getting the AI to find a new location to move to. So when creating a task there are two things we must have for the task to work. The first one is the execute event. And we're going to use the event execute AI. And this is basically the starting block. So as soon as the tree goes down and hits it, this will trigger. And to end it, you need to finish execute. And it's important that you have this because if it doesn't uh, ever have this, you'll never get out of the task. Okay, so you want to make sure you've got these two always. So the first thing we need to do to get this to work 
is we need to tell the character, the uh, NPC, sorry, to find a location based on that nav mesh. So what I'm going to do is right click and type in navigable radius and you'll see get random point in navigable radius. And this node finds one of those points inside that nav data we have. Now we're not going to input anything into nav data because by default we use the one that's there. But if you want any particular ones you can store that here and get that uh, put into this. So the origin for this is going to be the character's current location. So if I say controlled pawn and get the actor location, this is going to get the location of the AI possessed pawn, okay, the character. So the origin will be this character. The radius is how far away do you want the character to look for a point. So I'm going to put this as quite far, I'm going to do uh, 1500. And this is going to spit out a random location. So the random location is all well and good. We've got it. Excellent. But how do we get it to the uh, other tasks that we need to get it to? Well, this is when the blackboard comes in. So the blackboard allows you to communicate between tasks. So it's very, very useful, very, very powerful. So the way this works is if we go back to our behavior tree, and click on the blackboard, you can see here we're going to add a key to it, new key. Click on this and we're going to choose a vector and I'm going to name it uh, target location. A vector is being, of course, a location, XYZ location. If you are clicking on this and then click on here and it isn't working, like you're getting nothing come up, that usually means you haven't saved it. So make sure you save and close your blackboard first and reopen it. Okay, and then it should work. So your target location, you can see here on the right hand side has some basic details here uh, we're going to leave all of it as is just make sure you've got the name of it to what you want it to be click save go back to behavior tree and you can see now that target location is available on the blackboard down the bottom here now what i can do then is tell this task to look for that blackboard key so i'm going to create a new variable here and i'm going to call it vector and make it a type of a blackboard key selector so this will choose a random uh, not choose a random key but it will choose uh, tell it that this is going to refer to a key on the blackboard okay the name doesn't matter you're not going to it doesn't have to match or anything that's not how it works you don't need that name to be matching but what you can do now if you, if you drag the vector out and choose get we can now drag from here and type in uh, uh, get sorry set sorry set blackboard value as vector and the value you want to set is this random location. Hook all this up to the finish execute and the receive execute. And this is all good to go, except for two things we need to do. First thing we need to do is tell the finish execute that we were successful. So tick the little tick box to say this is a success. The next thing we need to do is tell this vector variable, this key that is storing this value is public. We need it public because we need other tasks to be able to access this blackboard key selector. Click compile and go back to your behavior tree. We can now add that task to it. Now, when you create a new task, you'll find that it just creates it and just stores it as this sort of messy name here. I always, before I add it to a behavior tree, is rename it. So I'm going to close this and rename it. It's just one with a big circle. And I'm going to call it find random location go back into your behavior tree and then from your sequence we're going to type in find random location now because we made that uh, variable public you can see that variable here vector dot dot colon that is uh, to target location now if you've got multiple keys in your blackboard you can change what uh, blackboard value the vector is pointing to by going to the right hand side to details and change the vector to whatever key you want we've only got one so therefore only one's going to show so that's found the random location the next one i'm going to take it to is to move to a location so i'm going to go move and you'll see move to as a uh, already built-in task so this move to task basically tells the actor to move to a certain location and don't move on until it's reached its target location so 
you can really see here it's already tying itself move to the target location again if you've got multiple vectors in your blackboard go to the right hand side and you'll see blackboard key and you can choose which key you want to use and once it's moved to that location i'm going to take it to wait for a bit wait and i'll take it for how long i'm going to go in here and go you have to wait for two seconds before you move to another one click save and then close this if i push play now you see the NPC will move to a random location, pause, move, pause. You can see it just randomizes where it goes. And it's because the nav mesh is what it is, it will figure out cleverly how to get around things and go up things as well. So there it goes, just randomly, not really affected by us, not doing anything at all, it's just running around. Okay, uh, which is fine. But it's pretty dumb, doesn't do anything. So in the next episode, what we can do is make it be able to see the player and react to the player. So make it look towards and run towards the player too. If you've liked this episode and want to see that, that very next episode right now, head over to Patreon, subscribe and support me uh, just like these people have. And you can see it right now along with other videos too. And uh, thank you so much for everyone who has supported me and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.